The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Good evening and welcome to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us live by telephone in the Toronto GTA area of Southern Ontario, dial 905-725-1907, toll free anywhere in North America, 1-866-905-7325. Worldwide, contact your local operator and then dial 1-866-656-5477. Send us an email right now in studio101 at gmail.com. And now, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thank you, Gary, and welcome everyone to this episode of Down the Garden Path, where we will discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes, and today, landscape design. We, we think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low-maintenance, and we do everything we can to help you achieve that here. I am Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design for the past 10 years. It is currently a design-only business here east of the GTA. With me is Matthew Dressing. Welcome to the show, Matthew. Hey, Joanne. Thanks for having me. Hey, Gary. Um, yeah, um, I'm Matthew Dressing, I'm also a local landscape designer slash hort technician, landscape technician, working in a local GTA garden center. Uh, and like Joanne said, we enjoy doing Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting, relevant, and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. We listen and learn right along there with you from each other, from our research, or the guests that join us on the show. So we welcome your questions via social media, emails, or a phone call. That's right. You can call today because it was just us, right, Gary? So the phone lines are officially Wide open. Wide open. Wide <laughs> open. We need our first caller, don't we? <laughs> I was going to ask, have you ever had a caller? Um, I don't know that we, because we had guests so we, often. We have. I think we have yes. in the past. But most people, like most of the shows here, for our listeners, they prefer to email. Yes. Because uh, they you know, sometimes people don't want to hear themselves on the air or they don't want their voice to be yeah. broadcast. So yeah. they... <laughs> They email. Yeah. And everybody's sitting. We know they're sitting at their computer anyway. Yeah, so that's it's right. much easier. It's for sure. For sure. So thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us down the garden path. Uh, this week, uh, as our landscape, you know, everybody's thinking the landscaping and the gardening season is winding down. Um, but it's kind of not. So we're going to yeah. uh, talk about a bit about uh, landscape design planning and planning ahead for your pro landscape projects, whether they're big or small or emergencies, not emergencies. Um, we thought we would do that. Right, Matthew? That's right. There's lots to know and still lots to do out there. So. That's right. That's right. But let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> um, but we want to start with our first segment right. that we both are really enjoying. We are. Yeah. <laughs> so what is happening in our garden? What is happening in our garden? Yeah. Mine, not too much. Yeah. My veggies in my patio containers are starting to look a little ratty and, and some are beaten. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm starting just to kind of clean those guys up and there's mums and new grasses and other things that are going to come in. So I think I'm just going to do some fall containers oh, okay. and just add a little bit of fall color. Yeah, because it's yeah. gotten a little warm for that, hasn't it? It has, yeah. it has, especially for those mums and asters. Mm -hmm. but yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a bit of that. Um, and then over at Nana's, just, I mean, watering. We've got the dry shade we were talking mm-hmm. before about. Uh, it's just, just watering and still planting. I mean, it's great still to be planting and buying lots of plants. So hit up those garden centers for some still, you know, fresh finds mm-hmm. and some unique sales, most certainly. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. all that's happening in mine, really. Yeah. How about yours? Um, well, I would have to say water. Um, yeah. Someone said on the radio uh, that... Uh, the last, you know, substantial rainfall was actually September 7th. So we're really in Durham anyway. Uh, I think Richmond Hill, there's getting, they're getting some northern Markham, Richmond Hill are getting a bit of rain tonight. Um, But it looks like it's completely missing the rest of the area. Um, So yeah, so I I realized, you know, you kind of think, oh yeah, I know it's been fine. Or yeah, it just rained. And then it's like, oh boy, everything's looking a little crispy. So my dad, I did my uh, tree gator. I don't know if I talked about the tree gator. Yeah. Um, I put it, uh, kind of rotate it. So I wanted to get my Japanese maples getting a very crispy Mm -hmm. in the backyard. Um, And I know it suffers because it's near the pool. And it gets, I know the arborist told me that because the, when the chlorine, the chemicals evaporate. Um, evaporate or disperse into the air, yes, yep. they affect the Japanese maple. So that's a factor as well as, you know, the water. Right. I oh, I was going to ask you about your tree gator because we were talking about mm-hmm. it. How long have you found that it actually stayed full or like how, what was the interval in between refilling it, letting it water and then coming back to fill it up again? Well, they keep moving it to different trees. Okay. So, yeah. So, I would, I mean, the the package is nine hours. I haven't t- t- timed it, but I pretty much kind of do it overnight. Like, right. like I, I mean, I if I did it in the morning or all day, like, and then, then in the evening, I'll take it off and put it on the next tree or something like that. So, I haven't, haven't like, you know, tried to do two trees in, in a day or anything. Right. It's certainly several hours. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't, the only thing is it doesn't quite empty. Okay. Yeah. That's it, interesting There's always, too. there's some, Always you know, right in the bottom. Yeah. It, and sometimes it's more than you think. So I don't know if there's like a fold in there that's preventing. I was going to say, there must be a, a fold before <clears throat> the, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I've even used it, um, we were talking about dry shade, and I've got two Annabelle hydrangeas under two crimson king maples in dry shade. Um, so what I did was I didn't, I didn't zipper it up. I just filled the bag with water and it kind of like half surrounded, like uh, half moon surrounded uh, the one Annabelle hydrangea. And then, you know, and a couple hours later, I went over and moved the bag to the second hydrangea and stuff. <laughs> so they still look dry, but uh, I know water had to go down there somewhere. So, yeah. Uh, it's so yeah. Go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. So that, uh, so definitely, I'd say I can tell um, things are looking um, dry, and uh, so and I wanted to, especially this time of year, I think it's important to have you know the Japanese maples and any trees newly in my new ble- beach that I planted earlier this year. Really go down to the fro- like winter, prepare for winter with lots of water. So right. I'm loving my tree gator for that. So uh, so I've got three Japanese maples and uh, and my new beach. So a worthwhile experience then, and for sure something to do just in case you need to do some deep watering, but really don't have the time to yes. stand there or yes. play with the hose a bit. I'm, I mean, forever. Even with soaker hoses on that new part of my garden, mm. um, I was so good at setting a timer and putting the soaker hose on, and and so it wasn't watering onto the street. And uh, I, uh, yeah, the other day I totally like it was like nighttime, and I'm like. <gasps> Is the hose still <laughs> on? And yep. So the driveway, the street, like, yeah. That. So that area watered. of my garden is very well watered now. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. So I th- And the other thing I can't get over is still the bees. I know I just pulled up <gasps> yeah. this picture from uh, our, one of my favorite nurseries. Um, and it's a picture of a, a Japanese anemone with a bee. And they are like, it has like three or four bees at a time. Same. And you could hear them. And my cat mint, yeah, I'm just, butterfly bush, you know, I'm just really, they are, bees are still really, really active, so it's exciting. We're finding that in the garden center, too. We have a lot of those big anemones, and Mm -hmm. they're just covered in bumblebees, and there's yellow jackets and the odd honeybee. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so what's happening in the garden center, in addition to the bees? (laughs) In addition to the bees. um, Lots of of fresh new stuff, lots of big grasses still coming in. Or like the bigger pot, like the two-gallon pots coming in of perennials. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's for the 10 to 12-inch round pot, if Mm -hmm. you don't know what a two-gallon is. That's right. (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, just nice big grasses, nice big fall flowering, caryopteris, rudibecchias, anemones, toad lilies, lots of fun. Okay. Uh, there's a spice bush that actually just came in, and I was actually unfamiliar with it. Oh, um, okay. Beautiful kind of red, very small, almost single peony looking like flowers to me. And oh, where would you put that? Did you look at the, and, oh, five to six? Yep, tall and wide, uh, full sun. Okay. Yep. And then fall flowering. So I think it was, it said, if I'm remembering the tag right, uh, August, September, October. Hmm. So it was quite interesting. Yeah, nice shrub substitute kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, it's getting ready for fall. Yeah. Yes. Um, keeping the plants watered, like you said. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, the rhododendrons, the magnolias, things that are going to bloom early in the spring. Mm-hmm. We're setting big buds right now, making sure that they're safe. Um, no real insect pests or diseases. I mean, the, the yellow jackets, they're everywhere bugging mm-hmm. everybody, right? So, you know, people yeah. are ridding their nests and trapping and killing those guys. But mm-hmm. yeah. Have earwigs, um, anybody in talking about earwigs at all on the hot, like the hostas really being eaten? Yeah. Earlier in the season, <clears throat> especially closer to mid to end of, uh, July, beginning of August. Okay. This a has lot been, of yeah, kind of current actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And they were kind of having, they had that spring wave. So they all leafed out and uh, probably about mid-June, they were saying, you know, oh, my hostas are starting to get eaten, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next wave was in like a month, month and a half later. Oh, okay. And they were just shredded. Yeah. I had a couple of new uh, hostas this year. One was electrocution. And it's just a thin, really strap-like uh, variegated leaf. Okay. Kind of like a stiletto or yes. almost like curly fries. Okay. And it was just like eaten to pieces. It's okay. tatters. It'll come back yes. nice and strong in roots and there's yeah. some new growth. But yeah, mm. yeah, the earwings got her good. Yeah, I think so. Because I was at um, uh, an install today and we're renovating her backyard, transforming her backyard. But her front yard is quite lovely, but lots of, and it's very shady. So lots of really big mature hostas, but they all looked awful Mm. and she's like what and and so at first you know you think slugs but then you know usually you can see those right so i'm like lifting leaves and i'm searching soil and i can't see anything um so i said you know i'm wondering if it's earwigs because that's more of an evening nighttime you know so i told her about the trick with the beer rolled up newspaper just to test it out and see if it is the earwigs right because she's like do i bother do i cut them back early or what do i do you know, so, uh, so yeah, because we're going to let me take some of those um, existing hostas in her front and divide them for the, because yeah. her back is also shady. So, uh, so yeah. Perfect. So look at that. <gasps> oh. oh, thank you, George. We have a question. Um, yep. Same with the bees. Same. Yeah. It's good that you're still noticing that as well. What are the best plants to plant now, if any? Oh, yeah, lots to, lots to plant, just like the ones you just recommended. Yeah, and those were just flowering ones. But, yeah, George, I mean, as long as you give them some good water, plant them properly, uh, you know, a lot of those root balls will, will carry through. It's a great time to plant. Uh, sun is, stress is going down, water table, you wouldn't believe it, is normally going up at this time of year with <laughs> the fall rains, but... Um, yeah, so yeah, keep planting anything, trees, shrubs. I've planted trees and shrubs in December, Mm -hmm. um, and they make it through perfectly fine. It's just making sure that they get that good planting, planting like you would at any other time of year and protected from that free saw, thaw cycle. That's right. And even if you, we talked about last week or the week before about the sale, getting stuff on sale. Right. Um, so even if they are looking a little bruised and battered, really, as long as their roots are healthy and they, you get them in the ground. Yeah. Um, they'll they'll do well, and I love that they can hit the. They kind of get a leap up over, literally leapfrog right over the things we plant in the spring because they've had that dormant period and they've had that rest. Right. Um, I think they don't have that. You know, where the spring planting, you know, unfortunately they suffer from whatever th- spring throws at them, as well as uh, transplant shock. You know, a bit right. of transplant. So uh, so yeah, fall planting. It's a really good time. Really good time. I find I think it's still a little hot this week. I'm hoping it cools down for next week. Yeah, we're hoping um, so too. Yeah, for my own garden. Um, but if you're home and you want to water, you're good to water. Then that's then that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Thank it. you very much for the question, George. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's what's happening in the garden center. So uh, I was wondering. We had mentioned before about that. Um, for slugs, remember the recipe of nine parts of water to one part of ammonia. Right. Do you think that would work for earwigs too? That's a good question. Yeah. I do not know. 
Yeah. I do not know. I'll have to check with because I got that from Don. I was going to uh, say. Gardens Plus. So, <laughs> Don, if you're listening, you're going to have to let us know if you yeah, right have, have you've uh, had success with that. So, mm-hmm. maybe it's something that you can let that guest know that you were. You were going through your hostess. Yeah, I did tell her today. Oh, there yeah, you go, yeah, yeah. See so I did tell her too. today because, well, I told her the recipe because I assumed it was slugs. And then I bent down and I'm like, wait a minute, I don't know that it's slugs. And then I'm like, well, I wonder if, I'm sure, I can't see anything else liking earwigs, like liking ammonia either. So <laughs> anyway, really so like yeah, so I'm looking forward to the show. I think there's lots to talk about. It's been a really, really cool, um, despite the challenges, every year it seems to be challenging, but landscape season. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking to looking forward to chatting about it with you. Uh, so why don't we uh, pause for our commercial break? What do you think? Sounds good. And we'll talk more about that when we get back. Landscape design. That's right. So you're listening to Down the Garden Path. I am Joanne Shaw, and we will be right back to talk about landscape planning here on Reality Radio 101. Looking for a quick, easy-to-apply an all-natural fertilizer to use in your vegetable and flower gardens or for your fruit trees? Why not work with Mother Nature? Layer Hand Manure is a terrific fertilizer, and this is what Actisol does by transforming the manure from their egg farms into an efficient fertilizer. The manure is dried using a technology that harnesses the heat given off by the hands. No other heat source is needed. Actisol is easy to use, safe for the environment, children, and pets. You can purchase Actisol products at your local garden center or order in bulk. For more information, visit www.acti-sol.ca. Actisol, the mother hen fertilizer. Are you wondering why your life isn't moving in the direction that you want it to? Do you ever hear yourself saying, it's like I'm running into walls or my money flows out as quickly as it comes in? Until about nine years ago, I used to hear myself say those exact words. I could never figure out what was causing these problems or how to fix them. Well, that's until I started to learn about feng shui and how by applying the principles of it to my home or my office, I could in fact help fix those problems and have my life run smoother. Wow. When you book a feng shui consultation with us at Your Spiritual Connection, we will help you to figure out why things aren't working out in your favor, and we will offer simple solutions to help correct the problems, which will in turn help your life to run smoother. Contact Trish John of Your Spiritual Connection at 905-391-8801 to book your feng shui consultation today. For more information on any of our upcoming events and workshops, please visit our website at www.yourspiritualconnection.ca. Your Spiritual Connection, helping you to make the connections in your life. The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Welcome back to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us by telephone in the Toronto GTA area, dial 905-725-1907. Toll free anywhere in North America, 1-866-905-7325. Send us an email right now in studio101 at gmail.com.
And now, right back to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. And you are listening to Down the Garden Path on Reality Radio 101. I'm Matthew Dressing here with Joanne Shaw. Hello. I'm still here. (laughs) You're still here. And uh, we are going to talk to Joanne about landscape design. She is a landscape designer in the uh, GTA, Mm -hmm. in Durham region specifically of Ontario, uh, design only business. And um, we had spoken before on the show, just you and I, and it was, and you can find that on uh, down two with a two, number two, earth.ca. And then just follow the link down the garden path. And it was just Joanne and I, we were talking about Joanne and how she got started and a lot of background about (coughs) Joanne. So Mm -hmm. I I think this was your idea just to talk about design in general, because there's a lot of stuff you can still do this season, specifically in the fall, about getting your designs done getting t- together with contractors mm-hmm. and we're going to explore all of that. Yeah. Um, so just if you wanted some background on Joanne, there's a fabulous uh, show we did there. If you do say so yourself. No. If I do say so myself, yes. <laughs> so as a designer, how has the year been? It was really, really rainy. I mean, we've had a weird up and down year. We really have. But I have to say from a design perspective, it was, it was probably my best year um, yet. So I don't know, because last year was so bad. I think it was so hot that people like didn't go outside at all. So they just completely over okay. <laughs> didn't even look at, at their yard. Um, you know, so it's a combination. This was year 10 for me. So, you know, with, I don't know, magic year 10. Congratulations. Um, thank you. So I have to say whether there's like my small, you know, hand drawings, you know, personal consultations or the master plans. Um, it definitely has been a busier year. And, uh, and I think I'm starting to see, it's been slow, but seeing that the people get how long it does take, you know, um, when you call to get, you know, to get landscaping done, right? that it is quite the process. Yeah. So being quite the process is now a good time Mm -hmm. at the end of the year. We're going into winter. Uh, Is it good to do a design or call a designer right Mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have to say that there is really not a good time or a bad time. Um, really the goal should be ahead of time. (laughs) That's my little catchphrase. What do you think? Ahead of time. Um, because if like, so for example, if you need landscaping done in your, in your yard, big, small, even gardens, just gardens, small projects, even those emergencies that I want to talk about in a bit, in a bit as well. If you call now in September of 2017, you are looking at mid spring, not the first install for sure. So probably end of May. Um, 2018. Oh yeah, mid spring. Yeah. yeah, if you want, wait and call in February. I love those February people because mm-hmm. they think they're going to be first May first. You they know, because they called in February when there was still snow on the ground. Uh, if you call in February, you're probably looking for your work to be done in July, and in May you're looking at late August. So pretty much, you know, that people that are in spring. If you're thinking like the May long weekend, if you don't call until the May long weekend your job's not going to be done until August. Wow. And that depends on the season. So this year, I would say, you know, certainly as much as the rain hadn't really affected my designs per se, they certainly have pushed all the designs. So all the installs are about a month out. I'm having, I literally have three installs happening this week, which is like a record for me. And in September, I have two installs for October still to do, to happen. So it's just like everything, you know, the, the, the May one was done in June, the June one, you know, the end of June one ended up being done in July mm-hmm. and August, uh, and, uh, and then September and yeah, so it's definitely pushed, uh, for sure. Right. And, uh, so I can think of exact, uh, so the client that we just finished, uh, and if you go to my Facebook page, I just recently shared uh, oh. some photos of that on Facebook or in- Instagram. I think a bit of both. I saw it on Facebook. Ba- Facebook. And yeah. Fantastic. And so I looked that up and that client emailed me on March 3rd. Wow. I know. And her dry, so the install is done. The plants are in irrigations back up. Saw it is in, um, the uh, driveway is still not paved. <laughs> so, and that's because there's a water, the paving company, when they scooped the driveway, they knocked the water main and so that the city hasn't oh. been back to fix that. So we, so little things that are out of the con- 
contractor and designers control yeah. things like that happen. But uh, I have another client that one that she the one that's happening in October. Uh, right now she's scheduled for the Monday after or the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and she uh, contacted the contractor. It was one where she reached out to him. He was working at a job site in her neighborhood, and she reached out to him at the beginning of May. Wow. And so her, and so we've gone through the design process and the thinking materials process and all of that and she's scheduled for you know october 9th or 10th wow so yeah yeah, get in get in there early absolutely absolutely (laughs) and uh if you're looking at a bigger project let's say to involve a pool um a good friend of mine is as a pool is a landscape designer but she really does a lot of designing of pools they're pretty much already booking 2019 2019 yeah like next year because of how wet this year was right everybody's pushed so probably the last few jobs of this year were pushed to the spring right and then and then you know anybody again if you called in july august or september you immediately went to next year so now that we're looking at the end of september now and is that mainly the delay just because of the large like it's a large in-ground pool and then all the stonework that's going around it, or what's, or are they just that busy that they're bumping into in mm-hmm. like twenty nineteen? I think it's a combination of things. I think um, it's a bigger project, so they're not in and out in two weeks, right? right? So they're so each pool takes you know probably three more like three to four weeks to do mm-hmm. um, from from this you know the grading and the excavating. You know that there's a lot more involved there, and all the and lo- a few more trades that you're usually waiting on the you know the pool install and the I've seen them in there drying the concrete the bo- you know the la- all the landscaping was done at that uh, wasn't one of my jobs it was one of Nancy's and so everything else was done and and then you could hear this kind of funny noise and you're like oh there's two guys at the bottom of the, <laughs> standing at the bottom of the pool with heat guns trying to you know dry the concrete in the pool you know everything else so no water yet in the pool and and stuff so the backyard wasn't quite ready for photographs so (laughs) there's just a lot more involved for sure yeah i have to say i haven't done uh very many pools from star i kind of get called in after the pool's installed yeah but uh and you know one of my contractors says you know regardless of the weather there are only so many you know if you look at when when we could do landscaping which is you know these days it's kind of you know beginning of maybe we say mid april until november well there's only so many weeks in that you know it's not like it's a 12 month season right there's only so many weeks and there's only so many jobs that they can do in those weeks you know so uh so yeah there is a limiting limited factor there so what would you say Mm -hmm. just as we're talking about contractors and getting jobs done what would you say your average install or just maybe even just a general average install takes what what should oh, homeowners expect? Yeah, like, that's that's huge. I guess it varies it really, on the project. Yeah, size. definitely. It, it varies on the access, like the front yards. You know where they can access everything pretty easily. Right versus like a townhouse, you got to <clears> go through the house <throat> or or even a backyard with no back. access. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So definitely things like that. Um, definitely slow slow things down. Um, yeah, I mean that one uh, that you're talking about that's on Facebook that. Uh, you know, well, it's not done officially, but I would say that took two weeks, yeah, you know, okay. so do the excavating, um, tree removal, um, you know, then they came in midway through and excavated the driveway and for, for everything to, to get done. And that was a, you know, new front entrance. We kind of kind of gave them a new little porch area and steps and soldier course around the driveway and new guard. There was an existing garden in the center um, and we just kind of added and continued that to the yeah. new around the new sitting area. So yeah, it was it was an extensive one. Mm. Build a pillar, you know that type of thing. And then we did some work around the from the garage to the backyard, some work on that side of the driveway as well. So yeah, yeah. I would say. I mean, believe me, the contractors don't want to drag it out. They want to <laughs> get in and out, right? They want to get on to the next job. They want to install. Yeah, as many as they so can, absolutely, right? For sure. absolutely. Um, yeah. So what about? Uh, Types of landscape projects. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's just important for the homeowner to understand the cycle from from uh, start to finish, from consultation to okay. finished design, from finished design until de- install. Like I said, there, you know, it really is a, a lead time, um, and I think there are many. Um, what I was going to say, boy, we're right out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. We're right out of my head. And we'll take a break. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, 
I know here's your I think we I think I didn't put a question in there for you oh, there we <laughs> that, go. Is, uh, that, that might be why we can't follow what we're <laughs> both talking about yeah. Um, yeah so contractors certainly have their uh, their uh, work cut out for them absolutely absolutely mm. um, one of the things that I find is also a challenge and we kind of get a raw like contractors get a bad rap or uh, people have have get frustrated at our industry when they when they in those situations when they have an emergency. So if you're lo- thinking about that's the l- timeline, you know that c- customer called me in March and her job gets it finished being installed in mi- beginning of September. Right. You know, so somebody called me today or you know two weeks ago with a, a heaving post or a retaining wall that needed to be uh, fixed so that they can sell their house, that type of thing. And they want, and they're calling around. And I get that every day. There's every week. There's like a couple calls where I'm like, I need this done right away. And it's been like this. And now it's because of you know somebody's wedding, or I need to sell the house. It needs to be fixed right away, and I can't right. find anybody to do it. That's the situation. Okay. So if there's any one of the little tidbits I can give to our listeners, and I hope you're enjoying what we're chatting about, um, is that. They're keep on top of those projects, just like the ones inside your house. They're not, you know, if the retaining, if your if your fence post is heaving, it's not going to fix itself. Okay, right. Don't wait until the f- whole fence is about to go over before you call someone. Right. So I think my, you know, I want to talk about planning, and of course, you know, people get it when I'm talking about big planning a pool or planning a big landscape project. But I did also want to touch on those planning for those little emergencies because when those things start to go fall apart. When it becomes an emergency to you, it's it's really hard to find, you know, and this is when you, then you find the guy who's sitting around doing nothing and he does a really crappy job mm-hmm. and you're not better off than you started. No. And I've fallen victim to that myself many times, unfortunately. So, you know, if the fence post is starting to heave, you've got that low spot in the walkway that collects with water and, is, and it's going to turn icy in the winter. Right. And you're just remembering that now because it's winter's coming and you're like, oh man, I never fixed that spot. Um, the front steps are loose. The retaining wall, like I said, is crumbling. You know, I know it's hard to plan for those types of landscape emergencies, but, you know, really try to find, get to know a contractor or find someone for a referral and get in the queue. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't, even if there's something you think, oh, you know, I'll get that fixed next spring. Well, get in the queue now. Right. Call and say, you know, I just, I wanted a quote on this repair. There's no urgency now, but I wanted you to, you know, see when you can fit fit me in. I think the most important thing I wanted to impart was getting in the queue. Because regardless of whether it's a big job or a little job. Right. It's all about that cycle, right? Mm -hmm. Getting in and getting in there. And like you said before, like you're getting in now, you're getting in next spring. Right. So... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Don't and again, on. yeah, and and I think you you think, oh, it's just, oh, it's nothing. They can fix. It won't take them long to fix that, or it just need, you know. But that's the, when they're in the middle of back to back, you know, three week projects. They don't have time for right. Yeah, it's yeah. not, and it's not worth it, right? No. So then you're paying more if they really, you know, and what happens? Unfortunately, in the industry is they'll, you know. They've got to make it worth their while. Right. So, you know, now you're paying big bucks for a small thing. Yeah. Um, or they're the ones that are not returning your call and not showing up and, and that right. type of thing, which is really unfortunate. I'm, I'm not advocating that at all. No. But um, as the saying goes, we were just chatting about it off air about um, yeah. don't let your procrastination become my emergency. Right. You know, it just doesn't it just doesn't work and it's not going to make uh, make your life any no. easier. So uh, things like retaining walls and fence posts and, you know, slippery dips that's just a health and safety thing around your own house for sure right for sure so i mean you think that you know your children or yourself or your Mm -hmm. parents or even visitors yes yeah just making sure that that's kind of you wouldn't do that in your own home right i know a broken banister i know but there's something about the outside where people kind of let those things slide a little bit until they're really until like the railing is broken and the step it's they crumbled have, down. you know, uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. Because I think the weather impacts things too, right? Or sometimes you might not notice it until it's rainy and slippery. And, right, and feel the water. And that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of one of my, you know, it's kind of out there, but uh, I hope everybody understands my message there <laughs> from that standpoint. It's a very good message. <laughs> um, do you want to keep going or? Yeah. yeah well, okay. Yeah, let's keep just, going. Uh, so just a, just another big question I wanted to ask you, and I know we're coming up on a break. Um, but so what about other challenges? So we've got the people who want things done yesterday. Mm-hmm. But what other challenges did you as a designer uh, or an owner of a design company really face this <clears throat> year? 
Like, mm. Was there anything that stood out or? I, I think the same that's happened in the last few years. I think okay. um, uh, homeowners understanding that they need to pay for a design before to receive a quote. You know, so yeah. a lot of people will say, well, can't you just come out? You know, I'm OK. I, I get what I want. I just want you to come out and, and uh, just give me a price. And, I, you know, it's not my service. I know there are people, there are contractors that do that. Um, but I think that's worth a, a few minutes to chat about that, that um, that a design, a landscape design plan, whether it's a, a master plan or whether it's just a small garden design plan, in the end, it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money and mm-hmm. it's going to save you a lot of frustration. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Um, I can tell you a story. Uh, clients I saw last week. I need to have their design for them this Friday. Um, so lovely couple. Um, an existing pool in their yard. I remember I said I get calls to mm-hmm. homes that already have the pool. Um, big yard, though. And uh, really want to do something fun with it and really make it, you know, kids are older. They want to make it a more of an adult backyard. Nice. And they have, waste, have spent their summer interviewing contractors. Yeah. And and they can't visualize and they're getting prices and they're getting timelines, but they can't visualize what the contractors are going to do. And they, you know, husband at one can this and one can't that. And and so finally, the um, the homeowner uh, found me and uh, (laughs) found me and and wanted to get a design. Right. And so I met with them. We talked about lots of options. Um, they've got a bit of an urgency in the sense that they've got a hot tub that they want to uh, install and they want it, they've ordered it and they want to know where that's going to go. Like they, and, you know, and, but really up until meeting me last week, which would have been what, September 12th or so. Yeah. Um, the, the wife still thought the job could be done this fall because they've spent all summer Trying to figure it out. Right. Um, they've even redu- removed one of their decks, you know, that type of thing, c- thinking they're prepping. And I had to be the one to say, yeah, it's not, you know, it's probably going to be the spring now. Like it's this, you know, we've run out of time for the season. Mm-hmm. So I felt like they, and she said, she goes, you know, we really couldn't visualize anything anybody said. And I said, I think the issue is that, um, homeowners aren't just looking for landscaping, you know, landscapers can kind of do landscaping, but I think this industry has evolved where homeowners are looking for outdoor living spaces. Yes. Right. And just like they have no hesitation, uh, in hiring interior decorators and interior designers and paying for those consultations Correct. and going to Home Depot and paying for or Ikea, Ikea going, yep. getting a cu- kitchen design. Nobody has hesitates. Well, maybe I'm sure a few people hesitate yeah. to getting those, you know, making that investment. But when it comes to the outside, they think, oh, you know, some spray paint and just lay some hose down. And this yeah. is how big this is going to be. And this is where that's going to be. And not everybody can visualize that. Mm-hmm. You know, so a landscape design really brings value. It uh, the consultation is not just a meet and greet and you know whatever and me to throw a price. Like, what are you getting? If I can, right. I can stand in your yard and say, okay, that'll be ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. But what are you getting for that? Right. You know, and uh, so I think it's a mindset change to realize that a design consultation is is really a service. It is a service, right? Yep. And I'm pr- right from the get go. I'm providing you. Uh, I'm a resource. I'm I'm uh, even before we get to the design stage in our meeting, I'm providing you some clarity. Mm-hmm. I'm asking you questions that you didn't even think about. Yeah. I'm suggesting things that, you know, like, why does the hot tub have to go there? Why can't it go over there? And I never thought of that. And, you know, um, that type of thing. So. I'm educating you. I'm telling you things to look for as far as the the plant material choices, what, you know, what's going to work, what's not going to work, the stone choices, what's going to work, what's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, a contractor's what questions to ask, what type of base, you know, well, what base is he using? Is he using high performance bedding or is he still using uh, limestone screening, which the industry is moving away from? So, I mean, even without giving you a design in that appointment, I've given you tons mm-hmm. of information, right? Don't you think? Just in the last minute, just rhyming all those things yeah. off. I mean, those are 20 minute conversations, every one of those. Absolutely. For sure. That's a great, valuable yeah. resource. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so if you want someone who's going to stand in your front yard and just say, okay, oh, you want a front walkway? Okay. That'll be $8,000. Then I'm not your girl. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, and I think, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think about, like you say, outdoor living spaces, right? Mm-hmm. 
you wouldn't just take a sledgehammer to your, you know, master suite bathroom, right? Right. So why should you take a shovel to the front yard and yeah. start digging out a patio or ripping up a garden? Mm-hmm. Right. It's the same thing. You would call for a professional. For sure. Right. There's questions to yeah. be asked and answered. And even if this front yard is seems straightforward, it's still the thing that everybody sees. Yes. Right? So this we is your first all, impression. You go for a walk around the block. Everybody, after the show, go for a walk around the block. You are going to see some bad landscaping like you are going to see the steps that don't match or mm-hmm. the or the steps that aren't the same riser or you know you're going to see the retaining wall or you're going to see the the trip hazards mm-hmm. in the yard or the car door that opens and hits the retaining wall you know or the tree you have to duck to get to the front door you know these are all things that you know it really it seemed like a good idea when the plant was really little yeah. right <laughs> so uh so yeah so what do we have oscars written in and he's saying, I know what you mean about waiting list, waiting to the last minute to get things done. He did that once and ended up using a contractor that could get it right to it. Mm-hmm. And they did a horrible job. That's right. So Oscar says, with an exclamation point, plan ahead, folks. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Ahead yeah. of time. Like you said at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. If you're sitting around, if the guy who's sitting around with nothing to do, if the industry is as busy as the industry <laughs> is busy... And somebody says, oh, I have time tomorrow, like a red flag. There's a reason he Mm -hmm. has all this time and can get right on it, right? There's a reason he's sitting at home, people. Yeah, (laughs) definitely, definitely. Thank you, Oscar, for sharing your experience. Yeah, thank you very much. That's perfect, exactly what you were saying. So why don't we take um, our last break? Sure. I have a couple more questions for you when we come back. And uh, you are listening to uh, Down the Garden Path with your host, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing on Reality Radio 101. Are you wondering why your life isn't moving in the direction that you want it to? Do you ever hear yourself saying, it's like I'm running into walls, or my money flows out as quickly as it comes in? Until about nine years ago, I used to hear myself say those exact words. I could never figure out what was causing these problems or how to fix them. Well, that's until I started to learn about feng shui and how by applying the principles of it to my home or my office, I could in fact help fix those problems and have my life run smoother. Wow. When you book a feng shui consultation with us at Your Spiritual Connection, we will help you to figure out why things aren't working out in your favor, and we will offer simple solutions to help correct the problems, which will in turn help your life to run smoother. Contact Trish John of Your Spiritual Connection at 905-391-8801 to book your feng shui consultation today. For more information on any of our upcoming events and workshops, please visit our website at www.yourspiritualconnection.ca Your Spiritual Connection, helping you to make the connections in your life. Welcome back to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101. To contact us by email, email us right now, in studio 101 at gmail.com. And now, right back to Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Thanks, Gary. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Down the Garden Path on Reality Radio 101. Uh, We are here, and we are talking landscape design. Uh, Is it too late? Uh, What to consider? Things to keep in mind. Uh, And we're picking Joanne Shaw's brain as she... (laughs) is the owner-operator of Down2 as the number two, earth.ca in garden design. So we've talked about, you know, going through the design process, the Mm -hmm. cycle that's in place. 
I've got a landscape plan. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked about some of the benefits of, you know, talking to you. Yeah. So So I think if you, one of the things to, sorry, not to cut you off. No, no. um, If when you, if you paid me for it, then right. you own it. Like, right. I think that's the bigger, one of the biggest things, right? So now you own so the plan. So that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So you own it. Um, in, in the, and to me, it's your vision. It's your yard. We, you know, we continue to work collaboratively. It's not like I just show up and say, here you go. Or I send you an email and say, there you go. Have fun. Good luck with it. You know, we, we work collaboratively. That's how I work. I know a lot of designers work the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, Finished design should be exactly, you should be your dreamscape, right? Yeah. What uh, Or solve your solutions. I try to do the same thing. Very yep. interactive, back and forth, mm-hmm. growing and getting to that final visual yes. end product for them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then once they have that, then I think the second biggest thing, uh, advantage of it, is then it gets priced. But now, if you it, whether you're doing it with one contractor or doing it with a couple, right. everybody's pricing the same thing. You know, mm. every uh, the the square footage is the same. The whether the the uh, features are the same. So are the same. yeah, you know. So I think I think that's a big thing uh, for people to know that now the contractors, um, you know, compare apples to apples versus interviewing three different contractors who stand in your backyard and give you three different prices. Right. And what are you getting? Right. So now you know exactly what you're getting. And then you're, you know, those prices make sense. So if they're not in your yeah. budget or if you have to trim or if you have to add, you kind of know, you know, what, what, what costs what. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like you said, apples to apples, <clears throat> level mm-hmm. of playing field. Kind yes. Of thing. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. And I'm always surprised. So as much as it's apples to apples with contractors, right. I'm always surprised when clients are shocked by the higher quote. Well, I was going to say. Yeah. Instead of being concerned by the lower quote. Right, you're always going to get like a variance, right? Mm-hmm. The high, middle, low. To me, or... you shouldn't, but you do. Or or close to, right. Right. So, so what is there, what's the difference there? Is there reasons to be concerned? Is there... Yeah, I think there are reasons to be concerned because I think a lot, and, and in many cases, the variable costs are about the same, right? The stone costs with the stone costs, the paving material, the plant costs. You know, there's going to be, depending on who your supplier is, there's going to be a slight price Plus change. Minus Plus or minus a bit, yeah. yeah. Even labor costs, you know, they're all, the guys are probably all paying their guys, you know, the, the experienced guys a certain amount, the, the junior guys another amount, you know, so the labor costs should be pretty fixed. Um, so if there is a really low quote or just a, a much lower quote, to me, that's a red flag more than the high quote, because right. I think, what are they forgetting? What did they miss? True. Right. Yep. What are they scrimping on? Are they, you know, how much base are they, you know, read through the details, how much base some guys dig out a foot and replace it with a foot of base. Some guys stick a, dig out six inches and refer, you know. Right. So what's what's the, the what's difference? Missing? Some I know I, I did a, another um, a client this year, and they, they when they called me they said oh it's just for the garden you know the our regular contractor uh, we found somebody else to do the patio cheaper. Uh, much cheaper than you know the guy that I recommended kind of thing and they're like oh much cheaper oh. that's you know the, my red flag goes up mm-hmm. you know and so you know there's no edge restraint on the patio there's no oh. so you can see the gaps like it's already been two years and the patio you know is yeah, starting to go they're moving separating. they're separating they're moving into the lawn so you know it looks like any not not you know the work looked good the cuts looked good the layout looked good but you know it's a little thing so if you if you're not you know what else are they trimming out right, right? devil in the details that's right dealing with the drainage some guys you know you see they oh they put the the down you know they do the interlocking and then they leave they cut off the they leave the downspout right on top of the patio (laughs) and you know or the porch and you know what's going to happen right give it two years that water is going to eat away they didn't deal with where the water goes right yep so um quality of plants you know do they know how to plant plants do they are they do they know that they need to bring in new soil, like take out some of that old soil, bring in new soil and plant the plants properly. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, cause I even, even with garden, like there, even when I'm just quoting a garden install, I've had that, uh, I had that at the beginning of the season where, um, the client came back and said to my guy, you were double like as if, the, and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh. I mean, if you were, I mean, and he's a good guy. I'm like, if you were double, then what were they going to do? Like, what were they going to do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So huh. I think that I, I want to implore homeowners to just really, um, try not to react at the high one and really pay attention to the low one and just kind of see, you know, cause it may be once you fill in, you know, massage that, uh, you really get to know, um, what things cost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, 
challenges um mm-hmm. that you faced this year how did you overcome those if did you have some of those I yeah mean, there were said, there were a few so there for were sure a few? yeah okay. the weather for sure um there were the weather this year definitely was a challenge um more for me more for the contractors than for me than for and yourself. yeah okay. for me personally um except that you know I, I wanted my jobs get, to get done too but i think the the best part though is that it was so obvious most of the clients were completely understanding like it. The one thing is when it, they really knew it was out of the contractor's control, you know, so they they knew we were the weather was causing us to be behind even before we called them to tell them we were going to be <laughs> behind, you know. Um, so that was one of the challenges uh, for me and and then therefore my contractors. Uh, the, another one that affects my contractors, but then me as well, is the challenge of uh, staffing, finding workers. Whether the guys can find oh. um, skilled or non-skilled labor, it's a, there's a real drought there. Even though people say there's people looking for work, um, not in landscaping. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that has definitely slowed you know slowed people down. And you know what? Just as I'm involved a little with Hello, and um, we've heard the same thing. That's one of the challenges yeah. too is is attracting people into the industry. And yes. Then there's lots of work. There's mm-hmm. good money. It's enjoyable. You're out. There's so many more benefits, but definitely labor issue. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. And so then the last little thing that challenge that usually the guys can fit in, uh, in between those l- big jobs, they can fit in some of my little things, right? Some <laughs> my little garden jobs or things like that. And this year there was just no way. There's there, just there's no just time. No Everyone's way. No. so behind. Yeah. So what I had to do is put on uh, my big pant, my big girl pants, <laughs> and I got some, I got some stuff done myself. Oh, nice. So that, and I learned that I liked it. I was kind of afraid to go that route and, mm-hmm. and kind of do some small garden installs. Definitely still small garden installs, but uh, planting jobs, tweaking some gardens, updating the plant removing old stuff um yeah so that's been exciting so i'm kind of giving me a new avenue of business so that yeah. uh, so yeah so what went with the challenge has definitely um could be another uh, growth point in my business so i'm excited about that that's very exciting mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so what advice would you give to other designers who might be starting out winking yes. across the table I, you can't I see. wondered about that question <laughs> yes yes because Matthew's just starting out I am just starting uh, yes out. yes uh and I think I've said these things to you too in the past um I think the biggest thing is a, a really good website right uh, you know like a really good website because I think being professional that's the big you know it's it's a profession you want to know like you, you want to know what you're doing right and uh and uh, you want people to know that you know what you're doing so i think a web a good website represents that really well i agree and you know if your website doesn't reflect who you are in person mm-hmm. that, like there's a big disconnect and it really will turn people off of yeah, your business yeah for sure yeah. for sure and uh, and then finding good contractors, which are challenging. You have to stay away from mine. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll leave them alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can't do it alone. Like it's definitely you need. It's an, and we have a. I think it's a great industry. We're a collaborative industry. Yes. We're really supportive. Look at two landscape designers are on the same radio show. Yeah, you know, exactly. both talking about landscape design. Uh, you know, I think it's it's a great great industry. And uh, so, but we definitely need each other. Yeah, I agree, hundred yeah. percent. So. Um, and if you're curious about design services, you know, that's landscape designer in your area. If you're not in our area, please, you know, that was a good time. Like I said, there's no good time or bad time, but just planning ahead. So if you are thinking, if you have an emergency or thinking of anything for next year, get on the computer now and start looking at uh, who's who's available in your area to kind of get in the queue. For sure. Absolutely. And if you are in our area, then please check out my website, uh, down to earth.ca, the number two. Mm. And uh, and hopefully I helped you understand the time, the process, and the timelines, and uh, so you can see. You know, I, I'm working on designs now that are happening for next year already. Right. Um, on top of the ones, you know, just finalizing the ones for this year and presenting a couple uh, ne- this week and next week for next year. And uh, so yeah. Right. Um. So. I That's think, fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Well, thanks for you know going again back into your business and yes. sharing kind of the behind the scenes and 
and that knowledge about the cycle and what is really happening mm-hmm. when you're calling a contractor and, and getting involved in engaging a designer. I mean, there's so many more benefits. Absolutely. Um, for Absolutely. sure. That I don't think a lot of people really understand. Yeah. So uh, just as, as I said before, you know, as Joanne said, down to earth is number two dot CA. Uh, we spoke earlier in the year, just a little bit more about Joanne's business mm-hmm. uh, down to earth garden design. Uh, you can see her there and you can also catch up on past radio shows. That's right. Lots of interesting topics we've discussed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, like us on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Are you on Instagram yet? Not on Instagram, not, yeah, but I am on Twitter, Twitter. at, at Nat Affinity. Yeah, okay. And I will be launching my website later this week. Friday, Ax- oh, Saturday. later this week. Excellent. Yes, and it'll be naturalaffinitydesigns.ca. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So that's good. So, so now you have the pressure of next week's show because you know I'm going to ask you. Right. I'm going right? to have it. Yes. <clears throat> and I'll be launching a little blog on my website. We'll be talking about different things. Excellent. off on things we've been talking about here. So Okay. Lots of pictures and fun things. Oh, well, that is wonderful. Wonderful. And uh, mm-hmm. next week. Next week. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about October in the garden. I know. Can you believe it? It's I the can't last. It's, October. it's the last Monday of the month next Monday. What are we going to talk about in November? I have no idea. <laughs> Not what to do in the garden in November. No. But you um, know what? There's lots of seasonal tips that you can uh, get from Joanne's monthly uh, newsletter. So don't yeah, forget right. to sign up for that at her website. Mm hmm. So Excellent. I think that brings us to the end. If you have any other questions or you want uh, Joanne or myself or any ideas for show topics, then please email Joanne at Joanne at it down to earth uh, dot CA. Uh, I haven't finalized my email address, okay. so I'll tell you that next week. Uh, you can also ask me at, at Nat Affinity uh, on Twitter or in studio 101 at yahoo.com. You can email us here at the studio. Thank you again, George and Oscar for writing in and asking some fantastic questions and sharing your experiences with Excellent. us. Excellent. Yeah. And, and more experiences. We're happy to hear them. So, uh, yes. so Facebook, Twitter, we'd love to hear them. So we thank do. you everyone. For, thank you everyone. Mm-hmm, thank you for joining us down the garden path here on reality radio 101. Bye Matt. <laughs> Bye Joanne. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your host, Joanne Shaw, right here on Reality Radio 101.